that's a that's a fancy introduction. That's a, I was listening to it. It's like it's actually about me, but it's, uh, it is. So thank you. Um, and actually, what um, what you were sharing is true. So one of the things I've been I've been doing many things. I've always been interested in, in creativity and in making things. But one of the things that I always did was build things in software or digital technology. And I remember when that fire went on in my life. I was about nine or ten years old. It's a little bit difficult to remember when it was, but it was the first time that my dad brought home an old IBM computer. It was just a black and you know green on black computer, and there was a software program on it which was called QBasic. And what you could do in QBasic is that you could write software in it. So in the library, I got a an orange book I remember, which was called, it was in Dutch, but it was called something like QBasic for Kids. And the first program that, we, uh, that, I, that I wrote was the following. It simply asked, what's your name? You typed in your name, and when you hit enter, it said, hello, name. So for example, what's your name? Bob, enter, and then it said, hello, Bob. That moment of magic that sparked there is still here today. I mean, I make a little bit more, you know, difficult software now, but the, the point is like, it's kind of, the, 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 the point is the same. And um, I'm also, I'm a millennial, I'm, a, I'm an early millennial, so that means that uh, when I was around uh, 14 years old or a little bit younger, uh, we got internet in our home. So now I could move the software that I was writing from the machine, I could move that to the internet. And there were people who needed websites, so they said like, you know, who can build me a website? And because nobody really knew how to do it, they said, I can build you a website. So that's basically how my first business started. And when I had to go to college, I followed another passion. I studied music. The thing was, I was constantly using software and digital technology to build um, uh, all the works that I was working on. So for example, when I graduated, I wrote a 45 minute composition. We played with a band, but there was constantly a machine playing along with us. And the latest artwork that I made um, was a, a dancer um, who was wearing an EEG scan. And there were like 16 synthesizers. And when, um, uh, when he was dancing, basically his brain waves were powering the, um, uh, the synthesizers. And uh, I wasn't only interested in this from the perspective of, of um, uh, art, but also in business. So I currently run a business. I'm interested in how we can create value um, through software for people. But the thing is that it was always very difficult for me to really figure out why do I like it so much? What is it in this digital technology, in this software that makes it so special? Because we all know, I mean, look at the, at the news, uh, in culture, society, business, it's everywhere. It's omnipresent and it's only getting more. So to share with you that idea that I have, and it's quite an abstract idea, but to, to share it with you, we first need to understand how software is actually created. Um, so if you just imagine the last app, that you were using on your on your phone. Now, ideally, an app that has some kind of images in it that could be um, uh, social media or email or those kind of things. When people create these apps, it is not so that when they're creating it and they, for example, want to show an image that they're actually writing software to put all these pixels on the screen. No, 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 they actually, there are standards for that. They use these standards, these existing packages, and they build on top of each other. You would be surprised if you would know what, for example, the software in the uh, Mars rover and the software used uh, on the website where you bought your tickets, there's actually overlap there. Similar software is being used. So if you now peel off the onion and we go as deep as we can to the lowest level in software, so we go through all these packages and all these things that people have created, what do we find? We, uh, thank you very much. This is the hint to binary by the way, unrelated to binary gender, but to binary in technology, zeros and ones. So binary eh, comes from the letter word bini, uh, which means two together. And one of the things that we do in binary code is that we can structure information, information about the world. We also manipulate these zeros and these ones, that is called logic gates. And these logic gates, we have seven of them, and that's it. We have ones and zeros and seven logic gates. But this is actually not the point why I'm so interested in it. Because if we go one step deeper, it becomes interesting. Because of course the question is, where do these ones and zeros come from? Who came up with them? Who came up with these logic gates? 
So if you first look at these ones and zeros, these, uh, the, this, this binary way of storing information, we can go back to the uh, 19th century to um, a mathematician and philosopher, George Bull. And George Bull wrote a book that was called The Laws of Thought. And what he was trying to do is to come up with a systematic way of uh, mapping out reality and logic. They went all the way back to the old Greeks, to, to Aristotle, and he came with a systematic way of doing that. We call that, uh, nowadays, Boolean logic. And that is what we see in our computers. And then we have these logic gates. And therefore, we have to go to the philosopher Wittgenstein. And although this point goes back to the old Stoics, he did something very important, which is nowadays called the linguistic term. And what he did was the following. He wrote a tract, which was called the Tractatus in Latin. And what he was trying to achieve was he was trying to map reality through language, or he was trying to, to understand, uh, to learn how we as humans understand reality through language. And one of the tools that he used was something called truth tables. In these truth tables, as statements were true or they were false, they were binary. And the logic gates that we use today in our computers are based on that concept. So if you think about what is being stored in these ones and zeros, regardless if it's our phone, if it's in the cloud, wherever, it is reality. We are copying the reality that we live in, the ideas that we talk about in our language, or we create virtual realities. If you followed the news, you might have seen that a very famous company just changed their name a little bit in that direction. And that is what I find so beautiful about digital technology. It is not about uh, mathematics per se. It's not per se about a hard science, no. It's about the beauty in language. So the ideas that we have, we can map them out in digital technology. And now you might wonder, okay, so now, okay, nice, all you know, great, but how do we use that? Well, how, do we, how we use it and how we use it in business is something that I have an idea about as well. So if you have logic and language in these ones and zeros, you could map out your life from the day you're born till the day you die, and in between eh, we have the, uh, the present. So it's constantly growing. It's a little bit hypothetical, but it's like you could imagine that this would be stored in ones and zeros, this reality of your life. And what we're doing on a daily basis is we are taking bits and pieces from these ones and zeros and this information of your life, or to give it a fancy name, the, a binary decision tree of life, and we move that from the physical world to the digital world. So what we do constantly when we use apps or when we use other types of technology, we're solving problems that in the past we had to solve in the physical world, in the digital world. So a simple example as um, going from A to B and using a solution maybe like, like, like a maps, you're outsourcing that part of the brain that, um, uh, that helps you to get from A to B to your machine. Your ma machine is telling you go left, go right, go there, go there. And we do that with everything. Everything that we can take out of this decision tree, um, uh, 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 booking hotels, work, uh, directions, dating, you name it, everything. And don't be fooled that this is only happening on your computers or in your uh, uh, iPhones or what have you. Think about the rockets, for example, on SpaceX that come back and land. Yes, that is something that's happening in the physical world, but the decisions how to steer the rocket are being made in the digital world. And what we're doing is we're moving more and more and more into the digital world. And what you will see is that certain decisions that we are made in, in our lives, so that could be my tree or your tree or your tree, they overlap with each other. And every time they overlap and they overlap enough, that's a business opportunity. So one of the things that you can do is that if you read the news or if you work in technology or if you work with technology, which probably all of you are in some sense, you can constantly think about, okay, how can I express in language the ideas of what I want to solve and what I see happening, and how can I bring that to the digital world? The reason that I'm bringing this up is for the following. Often when we talk about digital technology and the importance of it in our lives, which you know, I think uh, that is certainly the case. We talk about um, uh, hard sciences, like uh, mathematics and those kind of things that we hope that, you know, children study 
uh, that they learned to code and those kind of things like I did. But the reason I started coding when I was so young was not because of a, uh, a mathematical insight. No, it was because of the beauty of it, of the cool things that I could build with it. So that is the thing that I want to give to you tonight as an idea to think about. Everything of more and more and more in the world is moving from the physical to the digital world. And we need creative ideas to actually build these things. And we express them in language. It is even, there's a famous saying that goes, uh, language has infinite, is infinite uh, possibilities with finite means. When our language keeps changing, like the previous speaker just shared with us. So that means we can cre uh, keep creating things over and over and over in the digital world. And you don't necessarily have to write code or anything. You just have to be creative and you have to think and you have to see the beauty of it. So the last thing that I want to give away, if it's one, in one sentence, packaged in one sentence, is this. The reason why I love digital technology so much is for this. If it can be thought, it can be built. 